Hi, my name is Dr. Charles Nenner. Um, I'm trained as a, as a medical doctor, but uh, for many years already have been in financial markets. And I discovered, uh, actually based on psychology and psychiatry that I learned, that there's not as much free choice in the world mm -hmm. and also in financial markets as people think. So once I came to that conclusion, I started looking into how to predict markets because according to me, you can only predict markets if there's no free choice, if things don't move at random. So in the 80s, I developed what is called today a logarithm. Then I called it neural networks. Actually, it's computers who learn from themselves. And I see much more than we because they take out emotions. And I started to work at Merrill Lynch and retired after a few years. And in 1998, I was invited back to work in New York and in London for Goldman Sachs. And we used my programs for, uh, for the prop trading. That means the investment of the own money that Goldman Sachs has. Uh, until uh, Obama said it's too risky and me and a lot of partners left uh, around 2007, 2008. I started my own firm which I have already for almost 20 years, that is work that is based on, on the algorithms that can do the following thing. Based on the fact that things don't move at random, it means is certain market movements, and that's correct for all asset classes, start a move at a certain date, certain week, certain year, and they stop at a certain date and a certain year on the top. Not only that, as uh, people who studied uh, physics probably learned in school that if you shoot a bullet <clears throat> into the air, uh, you can calculate how far it goes and how high it goes before it comes down based on the momentum that you shoot it in the air. The same thing is uh, true, for instance, for a stock. Uh, a stock like IBM goes up with a certain momentum. It doesn't just stop so, so nowhere. You can calculate based on the momentum how high it will go. Now, the media will tell us that happens because there are certain uh, results coming out, not results coming out. So I want to give you an example why that doesn't matter. Let's say you buy IBM around 100, and it's now 150. You kept it for one year. Now the results come out and have great results. The question is, does IBM go up or down? Well, if my model, and in this case, the cycle that we build, shows that it has to go up, then next day the Wall Street Journal will write, people poured in to buy IBM because they had such great results. But what if the cycle shows that IBM has to go down because it reached the price target? Then it goes down, but the results are still great. So the next day, usually we can read something in the Wall Street Journal like people took profit because they don't think IBM will do better next year. Meaning the interpretation of the facts is more important than the facts itself. So with my system, we don't really have to look that much at, at the facts. We have to look at what the interpretation is gonna be of the facts at a certain moment. Now here, I got a couple of questions which I'm gonna address uh, that were given to me. The question is about technical analysis and Bitcoin. Now, what we do is I don't call this a technical analysis because a technical analysis will draw a line and says, if it breaks the line, it will go here. And if it doesn't break the line, it will go there. It's oversold, overbought. That is still potentially right or wrong. What we say is we come with absolute statements. That means is, in this case, the question is about the Bitcoin. Is the Bitcoin going up? How many days is going up? And how high is it going up? And after it reaches the tops, how many days and weeks is going down and how low it'll go. Uh, for that, I have here two interesting Bitcoin charts. Uh, one is made on weekly basis. That means is we only take the weekly closes in consideration. And one is made on daily closes. Now, this is, this is the one with the daily closes. Now, you see something very, very interesting. You see here where I have my mouse in the bottom, that is the cycle in red. 
and on top the blue is the real price action. And what you see is that when the cycle topped, Bitcoin topped. When it bottomed, Bitcoin bottomed. The other top, this one, and now it says here where the cursor is. You can the cursor shows on the left side what the date is. So it says around 526. There is a short-term daily low. Now Bitcoin doesn't have much fundamentals. I mean, you can hear stories, but nobody has any fundamental research uh, why Bitcoin should go up or down. So all you do is here uh, deal with emotions and the cycle below will tell you what the emotions are. So when the cycle bottoms, it means is that the emotions are going to be positive and people are going to buy Bitcoin. But again, as you see here on the bottom, this is a daily chart. More important is a weekly chart, which we're going to look at now. So this is a weekly chart, and this shows the longer term movements. Again, we got the first top here, the low, the second top, the low. But you see here on the weekly chart, <clears throat> we hit the high again. Uh, that's why, uh, why we're short already for a long time on the Bitcoin. And the weekly chart continues down here. So the situation is that the weekly cycle continues down and the daily cycles is close to a low. So we're probably going to see a bounce. Uh, when the bounce is starting, we can also calculate how high the bounce will go. So then we have the price target. And on the daily chart, we can see when the top is on the daily chart. And then when the top is there, based on the fact that the weekly chart here is still down, we can go short again. And there's no, not going to be a good buying opportunity until later here <clears throat> in July when the weekly cycle bottoms. Now, we don't call this technical analysis. Uh, I don't know exactly what people understand this technical analysis, um, but it's much more than just drawing a line and, uh, and looking for, for indicators. So we don't use too many indicators because it's not necessary, because once we know uh, where the dates are and where the price targets are, there's not much more we have to know. Um, so it says the technical analysis in cryptocurrencies is relevant, say, in stocks and commodities. Uh, the system works on all assets. Uh, the more people are involved, the less free choice. I mean, as if you have a stock that is owned by 10 investors, it doesn't work as good as stocks that uh, are being held by million investors because they neutralize each other's free choice. That's the only caveat that we're watching. The second thing is uh, the system needs at least 10 years of data. That's why Bitcoin for now is the one we concentrate on because not all uh, currencies, cryptocurrencies have enough data to give us to put in the program. So the question is, what are your favorite, most reliable technical indicators would suggest using cryptocurrency technical analysis? Again, we don't, we don't use much. We just use the, the, the algorithm and uh, we know the dates and we know the price targets and we don't have to know more than that. Um, now, the question is, what's the fundamental analysis in decision-making uh, buying certain cryptocurrencies? I don't know much fundamental uh, input in, in cryptocurrencies. So since we don't deal with this in general, especially in cryptocurrencies, we, we don't deal with this. Um, so I hope that this gives a little insight of what we do. Uh, it works very nicely for all price targets. Uh, we have longer term outlooks for the Dow Jones, for the bonds, for currencies, uh, Bitcoin, uh, whatever is being traded. Uh, wheat, corn, we do for certain firms. It's all based on the fact that there's no free choice in the markets and things don't move at random. If they would move at random, then you really cannot predict anything. 